What's up, guys? Welcome to the SJM Podcast. I'm your host, Eagle Call, and it's time to talk about who the five players that I think Man United should sign to really improve the team and possibly take us that next step and be able to actually qualify for the Champions League and not be stuck in the fucking Europa League. So these are five players that theoretically are available or more or less, um, you know, negotiable. So some of these are maybe a little bit outlandish, but of course, a man can dream. And these are all still players, I think, that, like I said, can really, really make us uh, a much more dangerous team and really improve us for the future because some of these guys are extremely young. At number five, I do have Adrian Rabio, And Rabio is a player who is without a club right now. He's a free agent. Um, unfortunately, the big issue here isn't necessarily, you know, a matter of the player not being good enough or the player not being available. It's simply apparently a matter of he has a lot of baggage with him. So it seems like... The reason that PSG hasn't extended his contract, because, of course, he is a solid player. He is a, a pretty young player, too. I think he's, what, 25 or something like that, 24, 25, maybe even younger than that. So he is a player with a lot of talent, and he does have a lot to, left to do in his career. But he does seem to be a bit of a dickhead. Now, the good thing is, at United, we've seen a lot of these guys who have these just kind of garbage, I guess you could say, personalities. They're not really garbage, but they... they are able to go from being hotheads to being really, really great players. Now, of course, that was under, uh, that was, of course, under Sir Alex Ferguson, so it was a very, very different thing. You know, Ali, he seems like a really nice guy, but is he a Sir Alex Ferguson? He could be, very unlikely, but, you know, he could, I guess, be. But we've seen what he was able, what, what Sir Alex was able to do with guys like Carlos Tevez, who, of course, eventually did kind of turn on him, but uh, still, you know, he was a, a very hot headed guy who, uh, is well, you know has has been notoriously known to be a dumbass. Um, he also did um, great things at kind of keeping Eric Cantona, who wasn't necessarily, you know, he how can I put how can I put this because he is arguably my favorite player of all time. Um, but he did have a personality that was very hard to control. Um, the difference being that of course Eric Cantona was one of the best strikers in the world, if not the best. When he was playing, and Edwin Robio, of course, he's a great, he's a he's a really good midfielder. But is he one of the top level players? Probably not. But he definitely would improve the team. And if they can get him for the, uh, you know, for free and only have to pay his wages, then that would be a huge, a huge thing for United to really improve a midfield that would allow Paul Pogba, if he does stay, or you know, maybe Bruno Fernandez if he does come in, to have a bit more space and not have to rely on Nemanja Matic, who is still good defensively, but his biggest issue is that he just isn't mobile. Um, he just doesn't have any pace whatsoever, and he's really just not that good at, at, at building up play, and he's just not that great anymore. He was really good a few years ago, but as of right now, he's a shadow of what he used to be. And I think that Adrian Rabio, being younger, being more mobile, being um, a guy with a lot of talent, and of course being free, that would be a very, very big, uh, very, very big move for United. At number four, we have a guy I just mentioned, which is Bruno Fernandez. Now, Bruno Fernandez is a guy who, um, of course, had a phenomenal season in the Liga Nos, which is the Portuguese league. He um, he participated in well over thirty goals for the for uh, for Sporting Lisbon. So he had a very very gr- a very very good season. And you, of course, you could argue, you know, listen, there's a big difference between doing that in the Portuguese league and doing it in the Premier League. Of course, there's no doubt about that. The the Portuguese league, it's okay, but it's definitely not an elite European league. Now, if they do sign Bruno Fernandes, that presumably means that Paul Pogba is going to leave because it's kind of hard for me to imagine a starting lineup with both Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes, two guys who defensively aren't really going to be able to do much, but offensively are going to be very dangerous. So unless United decide to go with like a, uh, you know, a, a 4-2-3-1 type of formation, but instead of having wingers, they go with cams, then that could potentially work. But that's more like a FIFA type of formation more than a uh, you know a real life formation in my opinion. So in my opinion, oh, I just said like four times, but regardless, I think that if Bruno Fernandes does come in, it will be to replace Paul Pogba. But I just don't think it's really going to happen. Um, I think that Pogba he costs too much for a team like Juventus to buy him. Real Madrid have already signed you know uh, Luka Jovic. He are they already signed uh, Eden Hazard. So I just don't see them really going and splashing the cash on another huge player, considering they've also bought another two uh, pretty expensive players. As well, so I don't see them really going out there and buying a Paul Pogba um, or a Paulo Dybala, which is another guy that they've been linked to quite a bit. I just don't think that's going to happen. You know, I just I think that 
they've spent too much money as of right now for the financial fair play issues, which they've already had to deal with in the past, um, to where they're not going to be able to go after Paul Pogba. I don't think Juventus have the money to go after Pogba. I don't think Barcelona are going to do it. I don't think PS. I mean, PSG would be a, a more likely option, I think. Um, it looks like actually PSG may have, of course, it's just a rumor, but it may be true. PSG was looking to get rid of Neymar because, of course, he didn't play for most of the season. And there are a lot of issues with him being a bit of a diva and the director or the president of, of the club um, being sick of having all these players who don't really put in the extra effort to go farther in the Champions League. It's all fine and, good, it's all fine and dandy to win the, the League One, but it's just it's really nothing special there. You know, there's, there is no competition. And uh, I definitely think that that is something that could potentially be on the table. Maybe them trying to get rid of Neymar. Um, nobody's going to spend the money to buy him, really, unless it's maybe Barcelona in some kind of desperate attempt or maybe some kind of weird trade. Um, but I just think that it's very unlikely a Puck Pogba is going to leave. So I do think it is very unlikely that Bruno Fernandes is going to come in as well. It does seem like um, Solstrom is pretty keen on signing Fernandes. But like I said, I just like, I don't think it really makes sense to have two, two midfielders that are that offensive when the clear issues with the team are the def- is the defensive side of things. At number three, I have really two players because I have option one and I have option two um, in the sense that I think that the best option would be Jordan Sancho and the second option would be Nicolas Pepe. Now, Jordan Sancho is an English player playing in Br- for Borussia Dortmund who had a phenomenal season and was easily one of the best players in the Bundesliga last season. And he was one of the main reasons why Borussia Dortmund were actually able to keep up with with Bayern Munich for such a long time. Of course, they ended up losing uh, the title at the end, but at the you know, but at the end of the day, when you're Borussia Dortmund, all you can really hope to do is uh, you know, is keep up with Bayern Munich because there's really no chance of beating them unless they blow. It. And of course, Bayern had a pretty bad start of the season or, you know, for their standards, of course. And Dortmund had a very very good one. Marco Reus was playing phenomenally well. Witzel was also playing really, really well. Um, and just overall, you know, they were looking like contenders, but of course, Bayern Munich, having such a deep roster, they're always going to have a very, very good chance, regardless of how far back they are, of actually catching up and, and winning the title. And that's exactly what happened. So, unfortunately, um, I was hoping for Dortmund to win, but it didn't happen. But regardless, you know, Jordan Sancho had a phenomenal season. He was just an excellent player, and he has all the promise in the world to be one of the best wingers in the world. And possibly a Ballon d'Or winner in the future. So I would love to see United sign him. Like I said, a young English player um, who, of course, knows what it's like to play in English football, who is going to be able to come into the team immediately, be a starter, and really improve the team. Because if you look at our, our biggest weaknesses, of course, it's defensively, you know, a center back and a right back, and, of course, right wing or right mid, because we don't have a true right midfielder. We only have Rashford, Martial, Alexis Sanchez, all players that they can play on the wing, but they predominantly like to cut in on the right foot and shoot. They all have the same characteristics. They can play strikers, they can play as left wingers, and they can somewhat play as right wingers, but none of them are good crossers. I think that if we can bring in Jordan Sancho, then that would be a very, very big improvement to the team um, and really help us move forward, especially offensively, and uh, and build up for the future because, of course, he's very, very young. He's an under-21 kid player, so... Maybe, yeah, I think, or maybe under 20. I think he's like 18. So he's just a very, very good player and uh, one that could really do a lot of damage moving forward. But option two, of course, Nicolas Pepe, like I said, is also a very, very solid player. You know, he's 24 years of age from the Ivory Coast playing for Lille, and he had a very, very phenomenal se- uh, season in the Ligue 1. So in my opinion, you know, this guy, he's a solid second option because he's young enough to where you can sell him off, once again, if he, if he isn't quite performing level that... You would hope. So he does have resale value. He does have a lot of quality. I mean, he's very good with both of his feet. He's very skillful. He's very fast. He's kind of like um, I'm not. This might be a an over uh, overshooting it a little bit, but he does kind of have similar characteristics to Mbappe. Whereas I think that Mbappe is a bit more physically strong, um, and Pepe is a bit more uh, is a bit more lanky, a bit longer, and stuff like that. But he's definitely got that kind of pace, that kind of finishing. And he is a very, very devastating player. So I think that, like I said, if we can't sign Sancho, then definitely we should go in for Nicolas Pepe, who allegedly could go for possibly 60 to 70 million pounds. So that would be a very, very good signing. And like I said, for Jordan Sancho, one that would definitely improve our team uh, going forward and, and one that could do definitely be a solid player for the future as well. At number two, um, I have Aaron Wambasaka, who looks like he's actually going to be 
is actually going to be coming to United and possibly being announced very, very soon. Um, he's one of the best right backs in the world, even if he's only an under-21 player. Now, a lot of people have been saying it's easy to look good defensively when you're playing for a team like Crystal Palace who doesn't really do much offensively. So for the most part, it is a defensive team. And I can concede that point to you, but what you have to understand is that he has better stats than any other fullback in the Premier League. And there are other teams that play defensively, but there are also a lot of teams like Liverpool and City who, yes, okay, they play offensively, but do they concede a lot? No, they do not. They don't concede a lot of goals. Liverpool, I, I can't remember how many, was like 11 goals I think I saw in the Premier League. So, I mean, they, they don't concede that much. So, if you're talking about comparing him to uh, Robertson and, of course, comparing him to the guy who is in his natural position, Alexander-Arnold, then we're talking about Juan Basaka being better than Alexander Arnold, who is talked about as one as arguably the best fullback in the world right now. So, I think that if we sign Aaron Juan Basaka, who I guess his biggest weakness is that he isn't very good going forward. Which, to be quite honest with you guys, that isn't really an issue for us right now because our biggest problem is defensively we're fucking garbage. Okay, our best player in, in, at right back right now is a failed winger from like 2011, Ashley fucking Young, who happens to be the captain. So, in my opinion. Aaron Wambasaka would be a phenomenal signing for us at around 50 to 60 million pounds, it looks like, with plus whatever bonuses they add. You know, that's a great signing and one that really, really, really improves our team, especially if we're able to sign a solid center back. But just imagine, you know, a young group of, of defenders like with Luke Shaw on the left, which isn't amazing, but he's definitely, you know, he's definitely improved and he is pretty good. Um, in defense, in center at center back, Victor Lindelof, Plus, maybe buying in a really, really good, experienced center back alongside Wambasaka, and of course Wambasaka himself. That would be very, very solid. There, it wouldn't be necessarily the best defense in the league, but it would definitely be a big improvement on what we have right now, and definitely be um, one of the better ones in the entire Premier League. So, I definitely think that Aaron Wambasaka is one we need to sign, and he is definitely a priority. Which, um, if it is true that he is going to be signing, and he could actually have already been announced by the time this uh, this podcast comes out, then I'll be extremely happy, and um, I'm just, yeah, I'm really, really hopeful that we finally bring in a, a true fullback whose job isn't predominantly to attack, but can actually defend and has the best tackles in the Premier League, has the best interceptions. He's just a phenomenal fl- a footballer, and uh, like I said, one for the one for the future, so regardless of what happens, if he does eventually move on, if he wants to leave eventually, then guess what? You know, he's still young enough to where you can make a huge profit off of him, especially because, like, whether he performs at the peak of his abilities or not, he has shown already with Crystal Palace that he is a very, very good player. Going up to number one, we have Toby, Toby Alderweireld, who, in my opinion, is is probably the most important because he's very cheap, first of all, and he's a very, very good, experienced center back that could really improve our team in a lot of ways. Now, Last season, it was absolutely no secret that Jose Mourinho was desperate to sign him. And uh, we apparently just never really went in for him. Apparently, the club believed that Bayi and Lindelof and Smalling and Phil fucking Jones uh, were good enough. I don't see how that's even possible. I think that's just completely retarded and just completely asinine and probably an excuse for the club not to spend any money. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why Jose Mourinho, from the very beginning of the season, was doing whatever he can, whatever he could, excuse me, to make sure that the club, the fans, and really the, the world in general knew just how disappointed he was with the way the market went and that the fact that they didn't buy really any of the players that he wanted. So, I mean, except for maybe Delo, who is a great player for the future, but if you're looking at players for the present, you know, he was one of the guys that we really needed to sign. So, in my opinion, um, Toby Alderweireld is a guy that we really, really, really need because, like I said, you know, he's a very experienced player. He is one of the top players in the world in his position. He just went to the Champions League final with Tottenham, and he is a, a starter for Belgium, which is one of the best national teams in the world. So, in my opinion, Toby Alderweireld is absolutely the number one player we need because not only is he a phenomenal player and in in, in one of the best in the world in his position, and he is most importantly a very cheap option because apparently, like I said, like a 25 to 27 million pound release clause is extremely good for a player of his quality, and he is one that we desperately need to sign. So let me know in the comments, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube or hit me up on social media um, to let me know what you guys think of my list. Should we sign these players? Are these players overrated? And who would you sign? Um, hopefully you guys will definitely check out some of the, some of the upcoming content because I'm going to be bringing out a lot of 
transfer market stuff, a lot of stuff about United itself, and of course about um, f football in general, and there's going to be a lot of MMA content as well, and of course, as always, as I always mention, you can check me out on Twitch, I'm going to start streaming Metro Exodus tomorrow, and yeah, I'm going to be doing uh, some some uh, coverage for my last weekend league of the season, which I want to do it because mostly I want to expose FIFA for being a shit game, so definitely check that out if you are interested in FIFA, which you probably are if you're if you're listening to this podcast, so thank you, thank you so much guys for listening. I'll see you in the next episode. See you guys.